Sugar cravings, how do we beat them down? I've been seeing that one a lot in the comments and keep those questions coming please because it tells me what you want to hear more about. So thank you for your feedback. Um, all right, sugar cravings, let's address it. Now, by the way, I've switched up the room. It's a whole new room. The California lockdown thing, dude, is just, oof. That was a global lockdown? Yeah. Sugar cravings. I made um, notes so I don't forget what I want to talk about on my girlfriend's legal Zoom folder. She said I was too lazy to go to the office and get a blank piece of paper. I hope she's not upset by that. All right, let's talk about it. First things first, is this something you really need to worry about? Like, it's okay to have some sugar in your diet. It's, it's okay, there's room for unhealthier food in a healthy lifestyle. So, I mean, if you're having 20% of your daily calorie allowance, that 80-20 rule, in foods that are not the most healthy, the world's not gonna end. If you're not overeating and you're managing your self-care and you're getting your sleep and you're exercising, you don't have to go crazy, but you're moving your body, ideally three to five times a week for 20 to 30 minutes, like, it's okay. It's okay to have a slice of pizza or the muffin, the cupcake, the whatever. The world is not going to end. Follow the 80-20 rule and just use common sense and balance, right, with the way you're living your life. Now, with that said, if this is a completely different animal and you have super intense cravings, right? And I mean, you're obsessing on it. You're thinking about it all the time. You cannot practice moderation when it comes to sugar. You don't have two cookies. You have the bag of cookies. You know what I mean, right? You can't stop the pint of ice cream, not the scoop. Or you even have withdrawals when you try to get off sugar. Now that's a completely different animal and that is absolutely something that I wanna talk about. So I wanna come at this from two angles. One is the more emotional side, the more psychological side of this. If there's deep emotional issues going on here, I highly recommend, and there's no shame in it, it's totally okay, we all have different crutches, seeing a counselor. Highly, highly recommended. Um, because oftentimes what starts out as an emotional craving of of feeding these deeper hungers ends up becoming a biochemical craving. And I'll, I'll address that piece, but consider seeing a counselor, building support, joining an online community. You guys know that, yes, my app has forums, but if you can't afford it, we have a free Facebook group, it's Jillian Michaels community, and there are plenty of other communities. Join one, get support, okay? Another thing to consider, I don't even need to look at my list, is hypnotherapy. And I know this sounds a little woo woo and crazy, but I actually had a hypnotherapist on my podcast not so long ago who talked about how she utilizes hypnosis to help people turn a corner with things like sugar cravings and cigarette smoke and things that are just generally unhealthy. And she's gotten pretty amazing results. It's pretty impressive. So give it a try. As I said, I know it sounds a little nuts and you're thinking, okay, you know, someone's gonna like what? Look into the spinning wheel? No, it's about making certain associations with these behaviors and habits that are unhealthy that inherently build a turnoff into it. I'll give you an example. You ever eat something that you love and you get sick on it, maybe food poisoning? And I remember there was a cheese, this, this is gonna sound gross, but sorry. There was a garlic cheese that I used to love as a kid. Um, Borson's, I'm a little, literally a product of the 80s. I loved this cheese, I got so sick one time threw up all night long and the cheese never touched Borson's cheese. I don't know if they're still in business. Sorry, Borson's probably wasn't your cheese. Probably just had a stomach bug. Never touch that cheese again. So quite honestly, what she does is she create without making you sick. These associations where you're almost repulsed by those really unhealthy behaviors. It's, it's fascinating and it's definitely something to explore. Um, I want you to engage in self-care and incompatible behaviors. I haven't even needed my checklist so far, but I'm not putting it down because you know I'm gonna forget something the minute I do put it down. Um, incompatible behaviors, what are these? For example, um, you're a smoker, right? What's incompatible to smoking? Exercise. So when we exercise, we're making a statement, we're taking care of yourself, we're making time for our health, our physical health matters, and it's incompatible with the habit of 
leaving the gym and lighting up a cigarette, although some people do, it will make you far less likely. So when you engage in self-care, giving yourself a facial mask, getting a manicure, pedicure, taking a bubble bath, going for a workout, which I'm gonna get into next, actually for the biochemical benefits of it, um, it's incompatible to being self-destructive. Things like overeating or eating garbage or drinking too much or smoking, et cetera. Using these crutches um, in ways that are simply self-destructive. And again, there's no shame in it. Um, all right, another one I want you to practice. This is far more surface. It's more behavioral than um, psychological or emotional. Remove it, don't buy it. You cannot eat what isn't there. And while it isn't a deeper solve, it will help you with my second set of tips, which is getting you off of the sugar, chemically speaking. We gotta wean you off and break that chemical addiction. If the food's not there in the house, you're gonna be far less tempted. You can't eat what isn't there. Distract yourself. So another thing I'll do, when I want something, I'll say like, okay, do you need this? Do you really want this? How about this, Jill? And I'll create bite-sized bits of willpower where I'll say, let me take 10 minutes or five minutes away from this and distract myself with a hobby or something I have to get done or engage in or do the kids pack the kids lunches or something I've got to get done for the day. Let me answer a few emails. And then generally it helps me forget about it. Call a friend, go for a walk around the block, distract yourself, replace the habit. So a lot of times we get into food rituals you know, I have this sometimes, I did dry January, and I realized I'm not a big drinker. I don't like to ever get drunk, but I would have a glass of wine at the end of the day with a beautiful meal, and it was the ritual I found that was so powerful. So how can you break these rituals of like, oh, it's my reward at the end of the day, it's my treat, it's the cupcake place that I always look forward to, can you break those patterns? Like take a different route to work if it was the muffin place that used to stop you or how can you shift this and engage in a new habit, something better, something healthier? So from now on, it's whenever I would do that to reward myself, now instead I do this. Could be sometimes I go on iTunes and I browse new music and I make new playlists and just listening to the music, that high energy music that I usually train to, makes me less inclined to want to eat and sit and be stagnant. Find a different behavior that's life affirming and positive to nurture yourself with. Replace the habit, change the patterns. Now, did I miss, now here's where I want to look at the list. Did I miss anything? Hypnotherapy, counseling, incompatible behavior, self-care, replace the habit and distract yourself. Good, recovered. Okay, now, biochemically, what can we do? We want to break the addiction. So first things first, and you're not gonna like these answers, but it's gonna take about a month. I'm not kidding, it's gonna take about a month. And it took me a month to get off of diet soda a million years ago, it took me a month to stop wanting my evening glass of wine. It takes about a month. So number one, you wanna sleep, you wanna hydrate. Just having that baseline of energy and stability and feeling rested and feeling energized helps so much with your brain chemistry. Number two, you can reach for something sweet, and I know this is a poor substitute, but have fruit in the house. Nobody ever got unhealthy or overweight eating pomegranate, raspberries, a banana, an apple. Contrary to popular fad diets that have villainized fruit, fruit is a great thing. Don't be afraid of fruit. Swap out for fruit, right? Try to avoid the fake sugars and the fake chemicals and the fake sugar-free crap that is pure garbage that won't help but it's okay, like one of the things I did was I switched over to like dried strawberries because I don't know if you guys know this, but I actually gave up my sugar addiction about three and a half years ago. Have not had a brownie, have not had a cookie, have not had an ice cream sundae, no actual sugary treats. Yeah, maybe it was three years. Christmas, like three years ago when I ate all of my kids' cake pops in a 24 hour period, I wasn't proud that day. Anyway, so, I switched over to like dried strawberries, dried apricots. I found these little crutches. Sometimes I'll take like a scoop of peanut butter and like dip it in cocoa nibs. I get it, like you'll have to find your crutch, but it helped me, it helped, right? So that was one of the things that I did and still do. 
I still do that sometimes. Um, some of us do way better going cold turkey. For other people, it triggers us, in which case you start to wean off gradually. So if you had two cookies, you have one cookie, right? If you had sugar in the morning and at night, you only have the sugar at night. But I highly recommend just white knuckling it if you can and going cold turkey, replace it with fruit and healthier versions of natural sugars. Put one of the things my daughter does sometimes when she's like, I still have a sweet tooth and she's already had her treat, is she'll put honey in her tea. It's a hell of a lot better than housing the, you know, bag of Entenmann's, right? I don't know if they're still around. I didn't say anything bad though, so hopefully they won't sue me. Borson's and Entenmann's sues Jillian Michaels. It wouldn't be the first time. Where am I? This is where I need the list. Fruit, I said that. Place the habit, I said, oh, I'm on the wrong page. Sleep, set it, ah, exercise. So we're trying to get those feel good chemicals going, right? I talked about uh, how that incompatible behavior works to make you less inclined to wanna do something that you know isn't great for you, but exercise just makes you feel better in general. It really does, maybe not in the moment. I've never been the person that's in the middle of a workout and just thought, oh, I love this so much, it feels so good. No, never. However, at the end of every workout, I'm always glad I did it. At the end of the week, I'm so glad I completed my workouts. I look better, I feel better. It always improves my mood, always. If I'm super grumpy or anxious about something, I'm like, I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna go upstairs and do a 20 minute workout. And I know I'm gonna feel better when, it, when I'm done, and I do. It takes the edge off, it chills me the F out. Exercise, and this is where it's like, go for a walk around the block, man. Move your body. I don't care what it is that you like to do, do it. Pilates, dance, whatever, walk, exercise. So we've got healthier forms of natural sugar, try to go cold turkey, make sure to hydrate and sleep. Exercise, move your body and give it a month. It takes about a month. You can do this. I believe in you. Okay, team, don't forget, I created this channel just for you guys. So click like, subscribe, and let me know what you want to hear more about. If it's diet, fitness, wellness, mindfulness, I'm here for you. So give me your feedback.